You know you're gonna see the best of the worst with the shit flick critic. You know you're gonna see shit that's absurd with the shit flick critic. From Pandemic the Room, the Samurai Cop Troll 2, Man of Sense of my Mighty Connection 2. So come along, see the worst with me, I'm the shit flick critic. G'day everyone and welcome to the first ever Shit Flick Critic Q&A with me, your host, Andrew Lewis. I'd like to thank all of you who submitted a question. Some of them will be quite interesting, others well were a little depraved. Um, a lot of you seem to be interested with the finer details of my sex life, so I'd like to address all of the anyway, how's your sex life questions right now. Disappointing. Question one comes from Sourced Load, who has a particularly frightening profile pic and goes as follows. All right, for the Q&A, where do you live? Also, how do you find this crapper doodle do? Thank you for your question, Source Load. I can see how it could be a little bit confusing where I'm at at any given time, as I have been moving around a lot in the last couple of years. So uh, the easiest way to tell where I'm living at any given time is through where I'm actually filming my episodes, because I just film them in whichever lounge room of the house I'm staying at. So the first episode, my room episode, was filmed when I was living with my sister in Adelaide, that's where all the Minecraft stuff is in the background. The following three episodes were when I was living with my dad in Edithburg, which is on the York Peninsula in South Australia. It's about a two and a half hour drive from Adelaide. Then I moved to Vancouver. The following three episodes after that was when I was staying in a basement in Vancouver. Then the one after that was when I moved to Fraser Street for a couple months. Then I went on my big trip, and then now I'm staying in another basement in downtown Vancouver. Uh, to answer your second question, where do I find all this crap of crap of doodle do, which I believe is a reference to didgeridoo, because I'm Australian, so I don't know, maybe. But um, basically, I don't know, I just uh, looked up worst movies ever, and um, for about two years before I made my first episode, I religiously, with my sister Sarah, when I lived with her, we watched a shitty movie every weekend. So after a while we had to start scraping the bottom of the barrel. So, you know, in that amount of time, I managed to see a lot of shit films and uh, it was through that passion that I decided to make this web series. So next question. Next question is from Norman M. Stewart and goes as follows. For the Q&A, one, favorite films, good ones, not plan nine. For me, it's Asphalt Jungle. Have you seen it? It's technically two questions. Number two, what modern day film critics would you consider the most respectable as Siskel and Ebert? Especially Siskel are uh, for me, that's all. Okay, there's a lot to answer there. Uh, in answer to the first question, my favorite film, I don't know, kind of asking what my favorite film is is like asking what my favorite band is. Like I have a different band for every genre. Just kind of like I have a different favorite film for every genre. Um, if I could pick a genre that's my favorite, I would say I like surreal existential sort of movies, um, particularly by, I like David Cronenberg, he's one of my favourite directors. Um, the Naked Lunch is one of my most favourite films of all time. Uh, other movies by him, also I really like uh, Charlie Kaufman, uh, being John Malkovich, Eternal, Shun Sun <laughs> Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind is a particularly wonderful film. Uh, also he directed Cynic Synecdoche, New York, which is a beautiful film, very strange, but very sort of beautifully orchestrated. So uh, yeah, I'd have to say that's one of my favorite films. Um, in, uh, have I seen Asphalt Jungle? No, but if you're suggesting me to have a look, I'll have a look at the trailer or something and maybe check it out. Um, film critics. I actually don't really watch a lot of film critics. I know it's kind of funny given that I am myself the shit flick critic, but I prefer to just watch a film and just make up my own mind as opposed to, you know, seeing what someone else thinks. I do think it is different with shit films though because the reason why people love watching someone talk about a film they've just seen as shit is because it's fun to hear what they say and if they notice the same thing. So I do think that's different, but watching someone review a film that's actually considered good is just kind of pointless. I mean, if you enjoy it, then why watch someone else talk about how they enjoyed it? Seth Tyler asks, question, what other hobbies do you have besides fantastically reviewing shit flicks? Oh, thank you very much. Um, I love music. I play guitar, as I'm sure you've seen in a few of my episodes. Um, I do write silly songs. Uh, I've thought about putting them on my channel, but they're not really shit flick related. But if you guys would like me to like make another channel or something and upload some of those, I'd be more than happy to. Uh, what else? Um, I love drawing, like I did that creepy picture up there in the background. And um, I love art, pretty much in any form. Um, and that's about it. I just like creating and uh, doing things of that nature. Nathan Spradlin asks, would you consider doing Batman Forever or Batman and Robin? 
I would definitely consider doing Batman and Robin. It's on my list. It's just quite low down. I have to get through all the backlog of films I have to do. As you guys are fully aware, you know, I'm not exactly pumping these things out daily. So, um, I will get to it at some point. It is one of my favorite bad films, but it's not bad enough that I would get to it relatively soon. In terms of, I actually like Batman Forever. Like, I mean, it's not a great film. It's not like, you know, Citizen Kane or anything, but it is what it is. It's a candy 90s superhero movie. Um, I saw it in the cinemas when I was like five, so I do have a soft spot for it. So I can't see myself ever reviewing Batman Forever, but Batman and Robin is definitely on the list. Next question from Sydney Lowe. Congrats on the 3,000 subscribers up, thank you. So here's my question. How long does it take you to make a review? Yes, thank you for your question. I would say if I had every minute of every day to work on these things, I would say it'd probably take me about a week of hard work to get something up. As I'm sure you guys are aware, it does take me a lot longer than that just because of work and you know other things. Um, I try to get these things up every two to three months. Um, you know, they do take a bit of work. That's why I started actually making the shit flick quickies, just because it was something that, like, they only take me about probably five hours max, and it's just like, pick something, write something funny, make it, and then just upload it. But yeah, the longer ones obviously take considerably longer. Um, my next review should be up, hopefully, in about a month or so. Debo Molina asks, if you're ever in Melbourne, Australia, would you ever consider doing a crossover with Sam Pants Radio or the guys over at Planet Broadcasting? As I mentioned before, I'm actually from Adelaide, Australia, which is eight hours west of Melbourne. So um, I might head to Melbourne at some point in the next couple of years or something. So I could look into it. Obviously, it's a bit difficult now because I'm in Vancouver, Canada, which is quite considerably further away. But um, I'll be back in Australia in October. Next question is from Hannah Mido. I have a question. Which movie among the ones that you've reviewed up till now has made you cringe or laugh the most? Congratulations on your channel reaching 3,000 subscribers. Oh, thank you. P.S. Will you review the whole Disaster Artist movie when it comes out? Thank you, Hannah. Um, I would have to say, probably the movie that made me cringe the most would be Food Fight. Food Fight was just awful and it makes you, it kind of kills a part of your soul when you watch it and you just sit and just feel dirty. Uh, the one that made me laugh the most, it's got to be The Room, you know. Uh, the Room is just hilarious. Uh, there are so many examples of just poor cinema making and you just can't help but laugh. Like So yeah, The Room is definitely my favourite. The Food Fight is my least favourite. And um, in terms of your second question, it depends on how bad it is. Like if it actually turns out to be good and I enjoy it, I probably won't do a review on it. Maybe I'll just do like a quick five minute video about my thoughts. If it does turn out to be absolutely dreadful, I'll definitely give it a ship flick critic review. Hyperactive Cow asks, question, who, what is your main inspiration for doing Shit Flick Critic? And what years in cinema is your favorite? I'd have to say probably the review that I watched that made me realize that it was something that I would be interested in would be Mr. Plankett's reviews and the ones specifically that he did on the Star Wars prequels. They are just so well thought out and you know, they go for an hour but you're never bored. And I remember just watching those reviews with my mouth agape, just thinking, you know, this is, hopefully something that I would be good at. Um, so yeah, Mr. Plinkett is definitely a huge inspiration for me. Uh, what years in cinema are my favorite? Probably like, I actually really like the late 70s, like camp, sort of a, like The Warriors is one of my favorite films. Um, I also like sort of like Xanadu. Not because it's good, just because, I don't know, I've got a soft spot for disco. So I, yeah, as I said, definitely the late 70s. And we have a special guest with us this Q&A. The actual Postman Pat has a few questions for me. Number one, do I amaze you? Actually, no, I've always been a Fireman Sam fan. What gives your life meaning? Just the usual relationships, uh, pumping out stuff of worth, um, you know, creation, things of that nature. Would you rather suck me off for the first 99% or the last 1%? I think by suck you off you mean give you copulation and by the 99% you mean the actual act of doing it and the last one is your ejaculation and to which I would say neither. What's on your summer bucket list? Nothing really, just hang around and try not to get too angry from the heat. Since you're Australian, do you use the word cunt a lot? I've actually tried to cut down on it in uh, recent years, but yes, I do use the word cunt. Not as much as people think, like um, a lot of Australians don't use it every sentence, but we do use it more frequently than North Americans. I have a friend who lives in Australia. Do you know him? He's called Austin Mathers. He's 13, lives in Perth with blonde hair and makes Roblox mods. No. 
Out of the movies you reviewed, which protagonist or antagonist, if you're feeling cheeky, do you identify with most strongly? I think my favourite character from the movies I've reviewed so far has to be Johnny from The Room. Just simply because, you know, it's Johnny from The Room. Did you hit her? Anyway, how's your sex life? No, I've never struck a woman and, as I mentioned before, very disappointing. The Storm asks, for the Q&A, my question is, do you have a full version of your intro song? Like a proper one minute version? And if not, you should. Yes, that is a good question. I've actually really considered making a longer version of my song. Uh, I'll probably do it in the future and I'm really glad that you enjoy it so much. James Makepeace asks, what originally made you start this channel? I've just always had a passion for terrible movies. As I mentioned before, me and my sister once a week used to get together and watch a terrible film and I just found them really funny and what else I found funny was watching a review afterwards and seeing that someone thought the way I did and seeing um, things that I hadn't noticed and just thought that I could do it myself. So one day I just wrote a script and filmed it and that became the room review, so yeah. Alexander B asks, Hi Andrew, do you like Vaporwave by any chance? If by Vaporwave you mean that weird statue head in the song boom, 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 boom. Uh, Yeah, actually it's kind of a bit weird but I did listen to a few songs quite recently and it's pretty good PKM101 asks What do you think are the worst movies by country? The ones that you have seen enough films from to really say doesn't have to be like top worst films, just a few that come to your mind. I think I talked about this before in one of my reviews where I pointed out where the directors of all the shit films came from. So off the top of my head, I think I would say Bodemic represents Vietnam, uh, Troll 2 would represent Italy, uh, Samurai Cop would be Iran, the worst American film I've seen so far would have to be Food Fight. And uh, I haven't seen any shitty Australian ones. I don't know if that's because we don't make shitty films or I just have never seen one. So I'll look into that. And yeah, that's pretty much what I can think of off the top of my head. Fatema Zora asks, first of all, congratulations. Oh, thank you. And my questions are, what is your favorite fantasy film and what is your favorite drama movie? To tell you the truth, I'm actually not that big a fan of fantasy. I prefer historical films, but off the top of my head, I would say my favorite drama would be, as I mentioned before, Synecdoche, New York. And my favorite fantasy would probably be, let's just say Naked Lunch. A.M. Reed 8 asks, what is lying? The line in question was, I didn't hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mar. ADF stuff has a few questions for me. Congratulations on 3,000 subs. Thank you very much. My questions for the Q&A are, what shit flick critic review is your favorite? I'd have to say that my favorite review that I've done so far would be my Plan 9 review. Um, it's not the most viewed, but I just loved the history of it and I like telling the story of Ed Wood. Second question, what movies do you plan on reviewing in the future? Um, I would definitely want to do Mac and Me is one that's on my list, uh, Cool Cat Saves the Kids, and I've got some Needle Breen movies coming up as well. Uh, that's about it for now. Third question, out of all the movies you reviewed, which one did you think was the best? It's kind of a tricky question to ask. I think probably the movie that was filmed the most adequately I think Troll 2, even though the storyline was weird, like it wasn't the worst out of all of them. Will you review the sequel to Cool Cat Saves the Kids, one of the most infamous good bad movies? Cool Cat loves you when it's released in October. My next review is going to be Cool Cat Saves the Kids, so I'll leave those ones for a bit later. Last question finally, how's your sex life? As I said, yeah. Not great. Brian Soares asks, you had Minecraft figures on your shelf in your earlier videos, so I assume you play video games. So my question is, would you ever consider reviewing shitty games? Yes, that is an interesting question. Um, basically, no. Uh, the reason why I review shitty films is because I've been to film school and I've made films myself, so I feel like I have something to talk about with video games. I don't know how they're created and um, I don't know, they're also quite long and like these reviews take me long enough to pump out as it is. Maybe one day if I'm in a position where, you know, I can be doing these full times, it'd be something that I'd consider, but for the time being, I'm just gonna stick to films. Jake Kemble asks, what are your thoughts on intentionally bad films like Sharknado? Yes, that's a very good question. I hate them. I don't like films that were made intentionally to be bad. I feel like it's like cheating, but also, 
it kind of backfires because they end up just being even worse than how they intended. I prefer movies that were made with a lot of heart and with the best of intentions, but unfortunately, because of the creator's ineptitude, uh, turned out the way they are now. So yes, the short answer is, I don't like them at all. Mambo Mombrolbo asks, what is the best thing and worst thing about Australia? If I'd have to say the best thing about Australia itself, and not necessarily the people that I know and love in it, would be uh, I love the nature. I love gum trees, I love koalas, I love kangaroos. Like it's such a unique, untouched place because it's been on its own for so long. But yeah, like going on a drive through Australia is just the most magical experience ever. Uh, the worst thing would have to be the heat. I, the whole reason why I'm in Canada in the first place is because I love snow, I love cold weather, and the hot days in Adelaide, like sometimes it gets to like 47.5 degrees, which is just brutal. Um, the weather's nice for like 90% of the year, but yeah, like summer for me is just pretty intense. Ian M asks, who's your favorite Australian comedian? My guest, Sean McAuliffe. You hit the nail on the head, Sean McAuliffe is my favorite Australian comedian and he's from Adelaide to boot, so that's pretty cool. And last but not least, a certain Irishman that I worked with in Vancouver, Keith Hogan asks, my question, if you had a role or starred in one shit film, what would it be and why? Thanks for your question, Keith. Um, I would have to say the room, the room, the room, the room, the room. If I had a time machine, I would love to go back in time and audition for it and like not do it like tongue in cheek or do it as a joke, like have a legitimate role and just be part of that experience. I'm so jealous of Greg Sestero that he gets to wake up every morning and know that he had a starring role in that film. Even if it was just a background part at the party, I would love to be in the room. So thus concludes my Q&A. Thank you to all who submitted questions. I hope that was interesting and not too boring. I tried to, you know, limit my babbling as much as possible. And on another note, like the fact that I've reached 3,000 subscribers is just incredible. As I was talking about before, when I first uploaded my room review, I really wasn't expecting anything. Like when I got to 500 views, I was excited. And then it got to 1,000 and then 2,000. And now it's almost on 50,000 views, which is amazing. Like, I just cannot thank you all enough, those who subscribe and have supported me through this whole journey. And it's not over yet. I've still got more reviews to uh, upload in the future. So keep an eye out. As I said, my next review should be out sometime next month. And um, here's just a bit of bonus information for you all, because I do have to go back to Australia in October. I'm actually beginning to write a script for my own horrible TV series like and when I mean it's not going to be a review it's actually going to be a drama like I've always been a huge fan of Walker Texas Ranger and how bad and oblivious to how bad that show is so I'm going to make my Australian version called a Brock Stampton Aussie legend it's just so early in pre-production now that it's not even a blip. But if you guys are excited about that, maybe give me a bit of support and I'm gonna try and get it done. That is something that I'm gonna look into when I get back to Australia in October. But in the meantime, thank you for watching. Thank you for submitting questions. Thank you for subscribing and being part of all of this. Uh, in the meantime, please go check out my other reviews and that is about it. See you later.